Elliot Kipchoge achieved something humans thought was impossible, a sub two hour marathon. One hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. That's how long it took Kipchoge to run 42.195 kilometers. Now he did have a bit of help, like his own personal human wind brakes and custom made bouncy shoes and even a race car with a laser display to make sure he kept the right pace. But it's still an amazing feat. After the race, everyone kind of agreed on one thing. Kipchoge didn't look tired. So how far could he have run if he just kept going? Humans already run some enormous distances in ultramarathon races, and the world record of continuous running is a whopping 560 kilometers. That's like running 13 of Kipchoge's marathons in a row. A study published in 1991 worked out that a perfect human at their absolute peak could run a marathon in one hour, 57 minutes and 58 seconds, which is just a tad faster than what Kipchoge did. So is there a similar equation that we could use to figure out the farthest distance a perfect human could run? To answer this, I needed a bit of help. My name is Alex Hutchinson. I'm a, a science journalist with Outside Magazine. Let's start with the basics first. What are the things in the human body that you would look at if you're trying to figure out how long they could run for? Uh, they will test your VO2 max, your running economy, and then the third thing would be your lactate threshold. VO2 max is how much oxygen we can breathe in and then use for our energy. So if you're really fit, you're able to breathe in a whole heap more oxygen. Running economy is basically how much energy it takes for each step, kind of like the fuel economy of a car. Someone like Kip Choke, who has a really long legs and stays relatively still, will have a much better running economy than someone like this. And then to lactate threshold. Lactate is an alternate energy source to oxygen, and it's like poison for your muscles. The threshold is the point at which your body starts using lactate as its main energy source, and you can't do that for very long. For really good runners, they're able to run at really high intensities while still staying below this threshold. So if you're really good at all these things, the chances are you're a good runner. The fact is though, most humans already are. So years of evolution have made us purpose-built running machines. We don't have thick fur over our body and we sweat heaps, which helps to keep us nice and cool. Plus, parts of our bodies have evolved specifically for running, like our butts. Basically, they're huge, which helps us to stay upright as we trudge along. We also have really long legs to help us take big, long strides. And our long Achilles tendons act like springs on the ground. So is there any way to predict the furthest distance we could run continuously? Here's Alex again. Yeah, you, you, you could do some calculations on how far you're gonna run. There's, there's something called the power duration relationship. You can go, you can last this long if you run this fast. In 1965, some scientists worked out this graph. Using this graph, you can work out the maximum speed someone can run before their muscles give up for any distance race. This is called their critical speed. For Kip Chogue, running a marathon, his critical speed is 21.744 kilometers an hour. For me, it's much lower. So what happens if you go really slow? The, the equations seem to tell us that if you, if, as long as you run slow enough, you can run forever. Hang on. If humans can run forever, what's stopping us from doing it now? Alex says, realistically, there's a couple things stopping us. When you're talking about long distance races, it's seldom the case that you reach a point where you simply can't lift your leg anymore and you're like, my legs don't work. It's always a decision. You're going to stop running when your brain tells you to stop running. But is there a way to trick our brains into letting us run longer distances? Diane Van Deren is an ultra marathon runner from the US who suffered from epilepsy. In 1997, she had an operation to take out a chunk of her brain. It fixed the epilepsy, but it also did something else. And she had an impaired ability to keep track of time and place or, or time and distance. So what she discovered very quickly after, after that is that she was really good at just running and keeping on running. And the truth is the body is almost always capable of more than we suspect it is. More and more sports scientists are realizing just how much our brain determines how far we push ourselves. In 2014, a study by Anthony Blanchfield and Samuel Makora showed just how much our mental state can improve our performance. In the study, 24 volunteers were asked to cycle for as long as they could. Then, some of them were told to spend two weeks talking themselves up. 
saying things like, feeling good and you can do this, while the others did nothing. After two weeks, they did the test again. And the group who had learned to use those positive phrases actually cycled 18% longer. Alex reckons that this kind of positive mental state is what separates good long distance runners like Kip Chogue from the rest of us. And, and, and I've seen his lab tests too, and they're not off the charts. So when you look at the VO2 max and the lactate threshold and the running economy, he's not better than the other runners he's competing against. And I think where he's better is in his, his mental outlook. He has enormous self-confidence, not in a sort of arrogant way, but it, he has self-belief that he's going to do it. And Kipchoge himself says it really is mind over matter. I think physical and mental should actually be the same. Uh, you cannot be physically fit and, 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 and poor mentally and you can perform. The moment that your mind is there, then all will be well. So when it comes to running forever, as long as you stay nice and slow and tell yourself you're good to go, there's nothing stopping you. For me though, I need to lie down. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you got something out of the video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. And while you're at it, make sure you head to the ABC education site as well. They got plenty of great resources for teachers, parents and students.